Good morning. This is Christina Holhorst, and thank you for joining me for the Pavement um, Management Technical Assistance Program Round 20 Call for Projects webinar. Um, I'm hoping that you can hear me. Um, we're recording this session now. Could someone um, let me know if you can hear me um, by sending me a message via chat? If you could, if anybody could let me know that you can hear me, I'd appreciate it. Yes, thank you, Lynette. Thank you, Christine. I appreciate that. Thank you for getting back to me and letting me know. So let's go on ahead and get started. Um, this is the PTAP 20 Call for Projects webinar. My name is Christina Hohorst. Um, I manage um, the PTAP program. Um, I actually work on the administrative side. My colleague, Sui Tan, is um, the technical expert on this program. Um, and uh, both of our contact information um, will be at the end of this um, presentation. Um, I put up the presentation so that you could um, um, print it out and take notes maybe if you'd like. I will also send um, this presentation and a link to the actual video to everyone who participated today and to everyone um, in the Bay Area so that they know that they can watch this webinar. So let's get started. If I can get this. Okay, here we go. So just some ground rules. Um, the webinar is being reco recorded, so we ask that you please mute your phones. Um, you want to digitally raise your hand using the WebEx raised hand icon so that you can ask questions using the chat function. Um, we want to answer all of the questions during the webinar at the end of the webinar so that everyone can hear the answer. And like I said, the copies of the presentation will be provided to all of you. Um, I sent out an earlier version of it, but I saw a, um, um, an error in the date, so what I'm going to do is go over that information with you so that you have all of the correct information. So. What we're going to talk about today is just a little overview of the program, the funding, um, what makes you eligible for PTAP, some information about the application and our process. Um, we'll review the schedule and then we'll go to questions and answers. So what PTAP does is um, it provides resources so that y you and your public works departments can have the information you need to give to decision makers so that jurisdictions can make um, really smart decisions about maintenance and rehabilitation for pavement. Um, if you want to read all about the details for each um, um, scope, work scope that we offer, um, give me a call or shoot me an email and I'm happy to send you the PTAP resolution. Um, we use federal surface transportation funds. Uh, we get an amount that's about one and a half million a year. Sometimes we spend a little bit more, sometimes we spend a little bit less. But the 1.5 million allows MTC to work with about a third of the jurisdictions in the Bay Area. We have 109 jurisdictions, so that's all of the cities and towns and counties. And what we like to do is um, come to, to um, examine arterials and collectors every two years and residential streets every five years. Um, it, one and a half million dollars in grant funding plus the 20% local match at one time was enough money for us to come and visit you every two years. But since costs are growing, um, what we do is we're finding that we work with about a third of jurisdictions every year. And so I might ask some jurisdictions to, to, to ask for an extension. So we're really limited to this amount of money per year. Um, we have a call for projects every year. We're on the 20th um, round, so we've been doing this for a long time. Like I said, every jurisdiction has to contribute a local match of 20% of the total project cost. So because these are federal funds, we have the 11.47% um, um, federal local match. 
And the balance of that 20% local match goes to pay for your Street Saver subscription of two years. Um, the minimum project amount is $15,000, um, and the highest project amount is $100,000. What that means is that of a $100,000 project, $80,000 will be grant money and $20,000 will be coming from you and your jurisdiction. Oh, maybe your jurisdiction, not you personally. So um, who can do this? Anybody who is um, representing a jurisdiction in the Bay Area can apply. And priority is given to local jurisdictions whose PMS certifications have expired or they're about to expire. Um, so the, the main point of this program is to make sure that the Bay Area knows exactly where we are in terms of our pavement condition. Um, so something like 98, 99% of the projects that are awarded are for pavement management program certification, pavement management system certification. We do have a couple of other um, projects that are um, design projects and non-pavement asset projects. So we, we award about one or two of those per year. Um, but the majority, like I said, is to help jurisdictions understand their pavement condition. We recommend that you apply for PTAP 20 if the certification is expiring in 2018 or 2019. If you haven't been inspected since 2016, because that means you would be expiring in 2018 with a two-year certification. And we're um, asking you that if you're going to expire before January 2019, please um, ask for an extension of your PMP certification. I can grant one extension before your next um, inspection um, per session. So if you haven't been inspected since 2016 and you're expiring, it's very likely that you're going to get into the next round of PTAC. Um, but we don't want your PMP certification to be listed on the list as expired in the event that some federal um, funds come through for your jurisdiction. Um, if you're not certified on the PMP certification list for MTC and you're a Bay Area jurisdiction, MTC um, can't support federal funds going to your jurisdiction. So it's very important that you're certified. And if you have questions about your certification status, please contact me, and my information is at the end of this presentation. So these are the type of projects we do, um, pavement management system, non-pavement asset management, and um, design projects. The PMS projects are to understand your pavement condition and to determine if current and, and future revenues are going to be enough for you to have an acceptable level of quality on your um, streets and roads. Um, we, like I said, we want to keep you certified, and this is um, the link to check your PMP certification status. You can also um, call me and we can talk about it and, and talk about um, the jurisdiction status. The scope of work is that the consultant will work with you and review your data set. They're going to review your um, inventory of um, your road network, so everything that's in Street Saver. Any new um, investments that you've made in your pavement condition would be entered into Street Saver, and, and that's going to um, help update the decision trees um, based on your preferred treatment strategies. So, so if your pavement's looking pretty good and you want to keep um, the condition up and you want to use a particular type of seal for your pavement and that's your preferred treatment, we want to make sure that the treatments that you like and that work well for your jurisdiction are appropriately entered because if not, then when you run your scenarios, the scenarios won't run at the appropriate cost. And it's very important that these maintenance and rehabilitation decision trees are updated properly. If you have questions about that, you can definitely talk to your, um, your consultant, they, and they can help you with this. A lot of um, jurisdictions have issues um, with this because a lot of times they haven't gone into Street Saver since the last time um, MTC was there. So if you have questions, please use that um, consultant as a resource. Um, 
they're going to actually go out on the street and perform inspections and do the data entry of all the distresses found during the pavement inspection. So they're going to go look at, your, at, at the street segments that you've defined and they're going to assign PCI values to those segments. Um, and finally, they're going to um, provide an, an, an estimate of available revenues um, for pavements over the next five years. So you're going to tell them how much money you could have and they're going to help, um, help you develop those scenarios. They're going to run three budget and, target, and our target driven scenarios um, and provide an analysis um, using the GIS toolbox and Street Saver. So we have tiger maps. They should help you be able to plot that in your tiger maps, which is the, the, the free map that's available in Street Saver. If you have a better GIS map, then they can work with you on um, updating the data for that map. Um, you're gonna pro well, um, it's going to provide you guys with ways to improve your strategies and finally they're going to give you an updated database and a budget options report. And that budget options report is going to be what you can give to your decision makers or you can summarize for your decision makers to show them why certain um, roads would be elevated to um, repair rather than others. So this, this, this report is, you know, MTC considers it really important for you as a way to translate your knowledge to your decision makers. Um, plus, they're going to um, establish a full linkage of the pavement data to the GIS map and Street Saver, and they can help you with any council presentations if you need help. Um, getting your decision makers, makers to understand why um, your decisions need to, to be followed from this report. Um, and then if you need some training on Street Saver, they can help you with a little bit of training on Street Saver. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention, though, is that um, a lot of consultants, if they have budget to do more extensive training on Street Saver, they're going to help you with that. Sometimes there isn't enough budget for them to provide a full one-on-one -on -one training session. Um, and that means teaching someone Street Saver from top to bottom. If you're in the situation where you have new folks that need to learn Street Saver from scratch, you may want to send them to User Week. User Week um, at MTC for um, the Street Saver program is the appropriate place for that. But like I said, if you need to get someone, you know, up and running quickly or if you need tips, your consultant should be able to help you with um, some training. So non-payment asset management projects. So um, this is anything that's not the actual street pavement. Um, and what we're doing at MTC is we're trying to develop all of the, the various non-pavement asset man management models. So we typically select one project per, per round. Um, right now, the focus on, on development of the modules is on traffic signal systems, culverts, or storm drains. If you have a traffic signal system project or um, a water project, we encourage you to apply. You can also apply for any other non-pavement asset management projects, but like I said, this is our focus right now uh, um, in terms of the modules we're interested in developing now. Um, let's see, so um, what they're going to do is, is we're just developing these tools for everyone. What might end up happening is that you'll get the GIS data, but the modules may not be completed at the end of your project because you're helping develop the modules. But you will get data that can be translated into Street Saver at a later date or that is that, that if we finish the module that you can use within that module. Um, we also have design projects. Um, a warning about design projects. If you have local money for a design um, and you use uh, this funding source for us to help you create a design, it's going to federalize your project. So um, if you have federal money to do a design, then I highly recommend that you come to MTC and apply for a PSNE project. Um, what you would do is you would go to one of the consultants, and I have a list of the consultants and their contact information, and you would get 
some estimates on what it would take to design the segment that you're interested in designing. Um, please don't apply for this unless your construction phase is fully funded. You're going to need to provide verification of that if your project is selected. Um, not eligible, residential um, design, and tasks that are in the construction phase. So if you need to get cost estimates for non-pavement asset management work or for design work, this is our consultant bench. Um, the type of work that they do is listed next to their names. They're all really wonderful folks who are happy to talk with you and they'll be happy to provide um, a, a back of the envelope estimate for us, um, explain what, what you need and um, once you apply, then that's the amount of money that you're going to put in the application. So if you call and you get three estimates, and one's 30,000 and one's 35 and the other's 40 for Street Saver, and you've spoken to these three consultants, then what you want to do is let me know which consultants you want to work with, let me know the amount of money that, that, that was quoted for your project, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to match you up with the, with the appropriate consultant, but I want to use the estimates that they have so that I can give you enough money for your design project. Please keep in mind, or your non-pavement project, please keep in mind that if you're quoted anything beyond $100,000, you will have to make up the difference between $80,000 and the rest of the, the quote. So what are your responsibilities as the project sponsor? Well, you started today by being at this webinar. <laughs> you can attend the PTAP kickoff meeting. And so um, what that means is that I'm going to have another um, webinar for all of the winners of PTAP. Um, we make the selections in January. So you're going to have a webinar, a kickoff webinar, Oh wait, participate in the kickoff webinar. I'm sorry, I'm I'm not I'm not thinking properly. You're gonna pick you're gonna participate in the PTAP twenty kickoff webinar if you win. And then your consultant's gonna schedule a kickoff meeting with you to visit you so that you can work on the work scope schedule and budget. So once that's provided, um they're going to do the work and then you have to submit a PMP certification letter to MTC. What's going to happen is they're going to draft the letter for you, your consultant, and they're going to provide it to you, but what you'll need to do is put it on jurisdiction letterhead and have your public work, direct, public works director sign that letter and that way we can consider your jurisdiction certified on the PMP certification list. So, um, this is the, these, this is, these are the dates that you need to pay attention to to stay on schedule. Now, I went and looked at these, and I think that these dates were wrong in the version that I put up yesterday. So here are the new dates, and what happened is I didn't update the years, and I apologize. But this is the update, and I've uploaded this to the site, and I will send this to you. But um, between April and June 1st of 2019, that's when the work scope schedule and budget are due. The reason that it's due around April is um, MTC makes the selections in January. That's when I'll take all of the projects that were selected and I will um, those recommended projects will be approved by the MTC Administration Committee and then I will give all of those names over to my consultants. But it takes until about April or May for them to start working with you because I have to um, collect all of your checks um, for, for local match and I have to make sure that that money is appended to the consultant contracts. And then I have to make sure that the task orders are written because the task orders are considered the notice to proceed for the consultant. They are not supposed to start working on this until they receive the task order. Um, in October, that's around the time that all the condition surveys, data surveys, and system updates should be made. Um, work with your consultant on the dates that work for you. They will be flexible with you on when you want your inspections. We have some folks that want inspections in the summer, some that want them in the fall, some that want them in the winter in the winter, so just please work with your consultant. 
by December, um, the, the budget analysis calculation and report should be there. And by April 1st, um, that's when all the final rep project reports are due. The reason that everything has to be finished by April 1st is because you have until April 30th to provide the PMP certification letter on letterhead with the public works director's signature to MTC. Once you do that, then I can update your PMP certification status. So you're going to get a final budget options report, or you're going to get an asset management module, uh, module data, or a 100% um, design. You'll get two years of PMP certification for PMP projects, and every project gets a uh, two-year subscription to Street Saver, which, of course, you've paid for because that's part of the local match. So what you want to do is submit applications electronically. Here's the website. Um, the link is on the left-hand side of that page. Um, what you're going to do is submit it online. No email converse, um, confirmation will be sent. When you submit the application, that means that the Public Works Director is aware that you're applying for this application. That's the assumption that MTC is making. So make sure that if you're applying that you let your folks know, if you're not the Public Works Director, <laughs> that you let your boss know that you're doing this. Because when I get your application, I'm going to assume that this was okay by all of the powers that be. Um, and you do not need to print out anything. You don't need to sign anything. You don't need to mail anything to MTC. Um, this is entirely an online process. Um, if you really, really need a copy of your application, what I'll do is send you, um, what, I, what I recommend is that you take screenshots as you go. You can always go in, until all the decisions are made, you can go in and review your application. You should be able to log in and see everything that you did. Um, but like I said, if you really want an application, a copy of it, take screenshots. Um, if you're desperate and you didn't get a chance to take screenshots and we're six months out and you need to know what you typed in there, what I can do is send you an Excel spreadsheet with the one line of all the data that you entered. So that's um, worst case scenario. So scoring criteria for the application. Project scope um, can get you a maximum of 25 points. That means um, PMS projects receive the highest scores. So that's because most of this money is for PMS so that we can understand pavement condition in the Bay Area. But if you're, um, uh, if you're a jurisdiction that completes your own inspections, um, what we do is we offer 25 points if you apply for asset management or design project. And that's because, you know, uh, um, jurisdictions who do their own inspections, they never win PTAP because they never score high enough. And so what we did was we made this um, change to the scoring criteria um, when we started the, um, the new cycle, the new um, section of rounds for PTAP. Um, the number of centerline miles is considered. If you have a smaller jurisdiction, you're going to receive higher scores. And that's because larger jurisdictions tend to have more budget to have more um, engineers and, and pavement professionals on staff. Um, the, a prior PTAP recipient, um, if you've not recently rece received PTAP, you're going to get a higher score. So what that does is that helps us um, make sure that folks who um, do, they, they don't have a lot of chance, they, like maybe you can't um, ask for an extension of your PMP certification. Um, the, the, what this does is it makes sure that the folks who really need the assistance are going to rise to the top of the scoring. And then there's certification status. If, if you're not certified, then I'm probably going to consider <laughs> you more important to serve in this program. So the consultant assignment process, you know, once we determine that you've scored high enough and you're a winner in this program, then what, um, what's going to happen is that I'll look and see if you typed in a preference for a consultant. And what I'm going to do is work as hard as I can to give you your preferred consultant. Um, we, select, we consider geographic proximity. I don't want to 
send some consultant to Napa and then have them do work in San Mateo. Um, it's a long drive for them. Some of them um, aren't in the area and have to fly in. So we really try to make it easy for them because we think it makes it easy for you um, if if they don't have to, to, to work so hard to work for you. <laughs> um, and a history of working with a consulting firm is also considered. Um, what MTC does is we want to increase quality control and some some folks have their favorite consultants and if a consultant has worked with you three years in a row, I have to reassign them. I need them to go to another jurisdiction. Um, what this does is, you know, we have a variety of consultants on our bench. Some work with big firms like Harrison Associates and Nichols Consulting and some are um, kind of a um, one shingle operations. And so we want to make sure that um, quality is is um, distributed. So we want to make all of the consultants kind of look at all of the other consultants' work to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Um, so something to, to think about is piggyback local funding. If you have a big jurisdiction, then um, $100,000 may not be enough to complete that work. Um, what you can do is you can buy additional work. If you buy $25,000 worth of additional inspections, or say you win a PTAP grant um, for PMP, but you also want to buy design, um, you can do that and you can piggyback on the contract that MTC has with the consultants. Say you don't win PTAP, but you feel it's important, you know, maybe your city council thinks that it's important that you do inspections this year, that it's been too long. Um, and so you didn't win, but you would like to, provide, to, to get some inspections done in your jurisdiction. You can call me and I will create a funding agreement between MTC and your jurisdiction and we can assign someone to work with you. Um, you need to, like I said, enter into a funding agreement and the funding agreement cannot delay the project schedules. We need to find out about these additional local funding projects as soon as humanly possible. Um, we need you to enter that information into the application and there are places in the application where you are asked if you want to provide additional local funding. Um, any additional scope must be an eligible use of PTAP funds. Um, so what a lot of jurisdictions do is say they want to do arterials, collectors, and residentials, um, but they also want to buy, um, you know, they can't use the grant money to do um, trails. <laughs> so what they do is they buy extra inspections, but sometimes if it's, if it's enough, um, if it's a high enough amount, then we can pass the money through here. But if it's not a high enough amount, if it's under $25,000, then you'll need to work with the consultant on paying them directly and doing a direct procurement. Um, if you have issues with that, call me if you have questions, if this is a situation for you um, so that we can work with you. Because really, MTC's goal is to make um, getting this data and keeping on top of PCI as inexpensive as possible. So if it saves you money not going into procurement to finish these these consultants um, to finish this work through a piggyback. You know, please let us know because that's our our goal. So, the schedule. We release the project, the call for projects, and all applications are due on November nineteenth.
Thank you.